Okay. Well, it looks like we don't have anyone here at FIA, which means I get to broadcast without a mask. Ha, 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 ha. How about that? But we do have people online, which is very cool. So, welcome to Houdini Secrets. Hey, gang, it is 3 o'clock, it is Friday, and that means it is time for Houdini Secrets. Thank you very much for coming, and hopefully that uh, everyone is able to receive this. I'm getting suggestions. It seems Streamlight is healthy. Streamlight is not, but everything looks to be about okay. So, all is good. So, thank you very much for coming to Houdini Secrets today. Today is, I'm really excited because we're going to go over some really, really awesome stuff. We're going to go and uh, create an introduction for Vertex Animation Toolkit. Now you're probably going, what in goody Google is Vertex Animation Toolkit? Well, imagine you're working in a real-time environment. You're squeezed to get every little bit of performance out of a CPU cycle and GPU cycle as possible, and you just can't squeeze enough. But you've got a, a bridge to blow up, and you've got a building to explode, or you've got a vampire to uh, put through a meat grinder. What are you going to do? Your application just doesn't have enough CPU, GPU cycles in order to handle it. Aha! What you do is that you go into a DCC package like Houdini, you go and create your simulation, and then you go and convert it to vertex animation texture. Then you go and bring it over to your real-time application. And then through the magic of immaterial shading magic, you bring in those textures and you use those textures to animate your object in real time. And it looks exactly like it did in your DCC. And, but the thing is, it's now animating in real time and it doesn't cost you a cent. That is the magic of VAT. And that is the magic of vertex animation, and that is what we're going to be going over today. So, uh, don't have a lot of uh, traffic today, so, you know, if you want, to, well, uh, hopefully if uh, you have any questions, try to send me something in questions. I'll see if I can sneak it into the, uh, into the little live chat screen, but if not, I'll just have to do what I can, and then if you have any questions, Please follow through and send me questions on the either on the website or on the YouTube channel, and I'll get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. All right. Now, with that said, let's get on to VAT. All right. Now, before we get going, I would like to thank the fellow who is primarily or had a huge impact on the development of VAT, and that's Luis Cruel. If you have an opportunity, go check out Luis Cruel's uh, stuff on Vimeo, any of his stuff on YouTube. It's really good stuff. When he was working with Houdini, he kind of took an idea created by, I, I think, uh, Steve Berkner uh, started, uh, got the ball rolling on that, and Luis really uh, worked with him, uh, worked and moved that and got it on, got it going and got it working, and so it got a pretty good pipeline going from Houdini to a bunch of various packages, and it is really, really, really cool, and it is super, super awesome. <clears throat> now, before we get going, there are four ways of exporting data from Houdini to go into real time and taking advantage of VAT. The first of that is with a cloth simulation, and it's the idea is what you want to maintain is the same topology through the entire simulation. So as long as the topology stays the same, the body can get as soft as you want it to, and it will translate over perfectly. Now, this is cool because over the summer, in the, I actually used VAT in order to animate Mixamo characters that I imported from Mixamo, put through... Houdini, and I took them through chops, yeah, I had some fun, and then I put into the game, I put into UE4, and we got working great. So that does work well. One of the other things I could do is with rigid bodies. Now, rigid bodies is not a constant topology, but it kind of is. So instead of 
keeping track of all the vertices, vertex for vertex, what you're going to do is for a rigid body, for every one of the chunks or one of the center points for the rigid body, what you're going to do is you're going to create a, a point inside of a vertex cache, and then you're going to create the animation. You're going to store the position and the rotation and the orientation on a frame-per-frame -frame basis, and then you're going to translate that those point information from Houdini, and you're going to put it into UE4, and you're going to remap that to the points as they exist as objects inside UE4, and then it's a, this is great for if you have a bridge to explode and it goes into a few thousand pieces or a statue to explode, that's going to be really, really fantastic. Now, another area is, like, suppose that the topology does change and the number of vertices do change, what are you going to do? Like, if you're going to be dealing with fluids or volumes, well, you could do this also. And so the idea is, instead of breaking the uh, big chunks into little particles, into individual points, that what you're doing with rigid body, what you're doing is you're breaking the fluid object into you're taking it out of volumetric state and you're going to put it into a manifold state and then you're going to track each one of the little triangles inside of the manifold as a vertex animation and you're going to convert that into engine and then you're going to remove it and re-put it in there and then the material is going to animate each of the little particles all the same and so it ends up maintaining a fluid or a liquid volume and it looks really, really awesome. And this also can be expended to sprites. Now, I don't know how much more applicable this sprites is. You might want to go ahead and just use the new and improved uh, Niagara, Houdini to Niagara converter. But instead of using vertex cache, vertex animation, what it does is it uses JSON information, which also works real well, too. I don't think that we're going to manipulate uh, the sprites, but I don't know, we'll see, maybe we'll have time to do it because kind of the new way of doing it is using Niagara and using the Houdini to Niagara tools. But today we are going to do the soft body simulation or the cloth simulation. Okay, now let's get things ready. I'm going to transfer this over to my other screen. All right, bring this up here. Okay, we've got a demo screen. Now we've got to go to Houdini here. <clears throat> okay, check it out on Houdini. What we have to do is make sure that we have the most up-to-date side effects labs input. And so, oh, let me show this. This is, yeah, this is the way we do it. So let's go side effects labs. Where are side effects labs? Are they here? I've got a dinky little window here. Ah, oh, there it is, side effects labs. And if you don't find side effects labs on your tool shelf right immediately, what you could do is you could hit the plus key and then where it says shelves, go all the way down to where it says side effects labs. Go ahead and click that guy, turn it on, and you should have access to the tool shelf, which you'll see right here. Now what we want to do is make sure we have the most up-to-date tool set available. So click on the little old Atari joystick icon here and a little window comes up. And so I like to say, like, oh, forget the embedded. I just want to go right to 18.5462. That's the most recent version. And I think that'll work. We can take the production build because that's kind of like what the version of Houdini I have right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click update. Or if you're doing this for the very first time, then it's going to install all of the Side Effects Labs tools onto your machine. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And I got a little success. It says, okay, please restart Houdini to reload all the new tools. <sighs> okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close Houdini. And then I'm going to open it up again and get myself some new tools. It's a coming. Yeah, it's a coming. All right, we've got Houdini back up in in action again. Fantastico. 
Okay, so like anything, we're going to create a brand new project. Now, since this, is, this lecture is going to go on for three weeks, let's create a whole new project and call it something like Vertex Animation. Or I've created a set recent projects. I'm going to call this, oh yeah, I'm going to go to new project. I'm going to go to someplace, and I call my new project HSL underscore VAT. You know, for Houdini Secrets Live and Vertex Animation Toolkit. I get it. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create my new toolkit and my new project folder. And I'm going to make sure that it is set properly. So we are good to go. Now, for this project, it really is important that you use the Houdini project. Now, for the other things that we did, like when we were working with the Houdini engine and going into UE4, it really wasn't essential. But this time, it's going to be really, really important stuff. There. I don't know why I keep on forgetting to press these buttons. But it's ruining my social life. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a cloth simulation. And it doesn't have to be done for just cloth. It could be do, it could do for anything that you're going to be doing, maintaining a constant topology. And it could be for the hair. It could be skin meshes, fish, chicken, or any other kind of soft bodies. And as demonstrated over the summer, we I was able to get Mixamo characters, which was about, oh, well, I think about 10,000 polygons working with this so it work, so it does work now i do have a gotcha it says the current tech can only handle four to six thousand vertices i think i lied when i said that because i think it can handle more now, i haven't really tested this out and really pushed it to its furthest extreme but i think that it will probably work the best that it can all right now i see that in my lecture notes i'm working from an old version of the lecture notes so i could be bumping into some technical difficulties and problems. And if I do, please be patient and I will try to rectify the situation as quickly as we can. All right, we're gonna start off. Okay, I'm gonna change my view because I don't like working in this version. I know that you folks work in this, but I have this own kind of like a little demo screen here that I like working more. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in Roberto. Now everybody loves Roberto, right? So I'm going to drop in a, some geometry, click geometry. I'm going to click in Roberto and a drop in. And then I'm going to go test geometry, Roberto. And then we have Roberto. Now you could use any other geometry that you want. It really doesn't matter. And I don't really care because it all works just the same. That's kind of like with the dynamic components of this vertex, uh, vertex cache animation are all about. All right, we've got Roberto in there. Let's go and return to the object level. And then we're gonna make the Roberto a collision object. So we're gonna go right ahead and getting into the simulations of things. So I'm going to go ahead and select Roberto. Then I'm going to go and check for the collisions tab. And do I have a collisions tab? Collisions, collisions, collisions. Do I have the collisions tab? No. So what I'm going to do is add my collisions tab. Collisions, collisions. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I have collisions over at the end. I have collisions. And then what I want to make is... Roberto, a static object. So with Roberto selected, I'm going to click static object. And it automatically created and converted Roberto to a static object. We say, wait a second. It didn't do anything to change. But you'll see that we created what was called an auto dop network. Now, this is the network that Houdini supplies when we run the static op macro. If we drop into here, we see a whole bunch of stuff in here. And we see that it, what it's doing in its first step is it's pulling in a static object and then it goes through the merge nothing really happens there because we're not merging with anything but we send it into a static solver which is a rigid body dynamic solver and then we pass that on to a, to a gravity node which applies force to the simulation and then we just go to the output 
Okay, so really not much a whole lot of anything is going on here. Now let's go back into Roberto. Uh, we see a lot of things have happened here. We, uh, there's been a, a file cache node and a VDB, and so that means that there's a lot of really good stuff and somebody's thinking for us. But all we want is the collision source object to be action here. And that's all we really want. I think after we get through this VAT hullabaloo, we're going to go into Houdini rigid body dynamics and other dynamic systems. And we'll get more into the details of what all this stuff means a little bit later. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and return back to the object level. And then I'm going to go ahead and save my Houdini file. So save as, we're going to say this as, I'm going to call this uh, soft vat. So it's a soft body and for VAT, soft vat. All right, now soft, we're not going to animate Roberto, regretfully. Sorry, gang. All we're going to use Roberto is as a collision object. So what we're really going to create is some cloth action here. So I'm going to lay down some more geometry. And then I'll call this cloth. I'm going to drop into that. And now I'm going to throw down a grid saw. Very simple. And I'm going to make a size a little bit smaller than what it is now. The uh, grid is kind of big. I'm going to make it smaller, about half as much. So five by, f that's actually about a quarter of the size, isn't it? Oops. I don't want that. I want five. Give it to me, please. Thank you. And make it 40 by 40. So we want some groovy surface detail in with this grid. So it's a pretty high resolution grid. Well, let's go ahead and move the center so that it's above Roberto's head. And so I can just grab this point and just poke up right about here so it's just sitting right above Roberto's head. All right, so we have our grid. Now let's go ahead and give it a little bit of color. Now we're going to do this the fancy way. Instead of just grabbing that good old color saw, what we're going to do is we're going to use a point wrangle. Yeehaw! We've got a point wrangle here. We're going to use some vex. I'm going to teach you folks vex whether you like it or not. All right, very simple. Well, we're just going to set the diffuse color of the vertices. And so we're going to do that by saying at, which means it is an attribute of the vertices, so at CD equals rel B box. That's R E L B B O X. That stands for relative bounding box. So, what it is, we are going to get the values of a certain point within the relative bounding box. So, we want it from input zero, so that's going to be a zero. And then at P. Now it's got to be at capital P, so that means we're accessing the position of the points. And that's where it is. So for every single polygonal, uh, or for every object that goes into Houdini or any other rendering package for that matter, you're going to have a bounding box. You know, it exists and you can't get rid of it. So you might as well get used to it because it is there and it is part of the rendering pipeline. But what we want to do is get the relative position of every single point inside of the bounding box. And that's what rel B box does. It returns the relative position of whatever point that we give it. Now we're going to give it a vector, which is a three tuple. But a, when we say at P, at capital P, that's exactly what we get when we deliver that, and it's going to deliver. The, so let's go ahead and click that. I'm going to hit Control S. All right, now you can see what we have is a little bit of a rainbow pattern on our cloth. A little bit of interesting stuff. 
I guess that beats just creating a plain old texture map. I mean, we've done texture map a lot of times. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back up to the object level. And then I'm going to grab another part of the physics, Houdini physics library called FEM cloth. And so I don't think FEM cloth is on here. So I'm going to hit plus and then shells. And I'm going to look for FEM. Do I have that here? FEM cloth. Yes. <clears throat> So fem is not short for female or fembots or anything of the femacular terminology. What that stands for is finite element method, just so you might like to know. All right. So what we're going to do is, like Roberto, we're going to press our cloth object. And now what we want to do, we press our cloth geometry. Then we're going to come over to where it says this is a little t-shirt icon. We're going to go ahead and click that t-shirt icon. It says cloth object. All right. And, but we look at it and overall nothing happened. What gives? Now, if we were to go into the auto dot network, we would see that, oh, we've got a lot more stuff to get pulled into it. And that we've got the cloth object with the cloth solver. And now it's getting pumped and merged into gravity and it's doing it all for us. So that just begs me to think, what happens if I hit the play button? Boom, boom, boom. All right. Now this is going to take a while because my machine's a little bit old and it's a little bit of plug chug and just kind of a sloppy slow. But I'm going to leave that. I'm going to stop that and say, hey, enough of that. We've seen you animate. Namas. But you'll notice that the cloth, when the cloth wrapped around Roberto, it kind of like continued and went all the way to the floor. Now, this wouldn't have happened if you put the cloth around maybe something like Tommy or Craig. It would just get stuck on the upper parts of these characters and the cloth wouldn't hit the floor. But for those of you whose cloth is hitting the floor, this is what you got to do. We're going to add a ground plane. So I'm going to return to the collisions. And without having anything to press, I'm just going to click on the ground plane icon, which is the, I don't know, it looks like it's a little... Uh, you know, golf tee, and it looks like there's a golf ball getting teed up, getting ready to get whacked into the oblivion here. So if I just click that, then we see that the ground plane object comes on and it shows up. But I want it to be at the bottom of Roberto so it's not interpenetrating Roberto. So I want to just translate it down a little bit. So with the ground plane selected, I'm going to grab its transform jack and just move it down. Just a wee bit. Okay, there's a there's our ground object. And guess what, folks? I bet if we take a look at the auto dot network, we're gonna see lots of goodies that have been added. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. There is our golf ball on its teed network, and it's getting synced and worked with Roberto, and it's going to behave as a static object as well. So this is kind of like a prequel into the Houdini. Uh, static surface dynamics portion that I'm going to be giving you probably in February sometime. Notice that these the ground plane and the Roberto now objects are now merged together and they're going into the static solver SOP and they're becoming one static a rigid body and that's where the cloth is going to interpenetrate and work against. So let's go ahead and simulate this and see what we get. All right, there has been plugging around for a while. It looks like it's reached a certain amount of stability. And 
I don't necessarily want to let this go any further, so I'm going to stop this right about now. Yes, we stopped at frame 70. How awesome is that? I'm going to change my frame rate where it goes all my frame end point where it goes all the way to 300. I'm going to change that to 70 so it's a little bit smaller. And so we're only going between 1 and 70. How about that? And I'm going to go ahead and save this to make sure that is functioning. Now you'll notice that when we play this, this cloth object, woo, that's so fast. I'm gonna go put that in real time. So I'm gonna click on this real time clock button. And so that should slow things down a little bit. Yeah, okay, we see that the cloth object is kind of jittery. It's got some kind of jaggy elements on it, which isn't really too sexy. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna clean that up and get rid of it. And so, Here's what comes to my favorite part of the day. We're going to play with chops. Yeah, baby. Okay, in order to do that, let's drop into the cloth object and then lay down a chop network. All right, chops, and I'm going to call this one smooth cloth. Okay, we're gonna drop into smooth cloth here. And now, this is kind of a primitive version of chops. I would really, I think I need some time to put this up, but I'd really love to give a whole class on chops and to really go into all that it can and can't do and really create some fantastic demos. But like I said, it was probably take me a while to create that. So I don't know if I'm gonna come that with anytime soon. I have to do this stuff that's a little easier. And I've done this vertex animation textures enough time so that it's pretty easy. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But what we gotta do is we gotta get the information into chops. So I'm gonna click on here and say, give me some geometry. Give me some cloth. All right. So we've got that, and so we gotta tell it where we wanna go. I want the, oh, I forgot to do one important thing. I forgot to bake all this stuff out. So I'm gonna come right back to you, but I'm gonna go back up. And so where it says dop import, I wanted to save all this to cache information. So that means I wanna write it out to disk so that it will process a whole lot faster. So I'm gonna do a file cache. Oops, come on, give it to me. Okay, so I don't want this to go to 300. I want it to go to 70. So I'm going to delete this channel. Put it on 70. And let's see where it's outputting to. Hip, geo, hip name, OSB. Okay, I don't want all that. All right, so where do we want to put this? I have a look over here. We go to the job. We go to... Uh, let's see, uh, oh, what is it, geo or simulation? Oh, yeah, this is a simulation, so let's go sim. And there's Roberto, or there's an old Roberto. Let's create a new Roberto, and this is called a softy. Okay, so we're in softy, and so I'm going to put the name down, V. So I'm just going to call this softy. Dot dollar F. Now, the dollar F refers to the frame number. Now, for every one of the frame numbers, and that goes from 1 to 70, we're going to create output one piece of geometry, and that's the BGO. And that is so that it is going to create a sequence of geometry objects over the entire simulation. I'm going to click Accept, and then I'll click Road for Disk, and it's going to complain, but that is okay. It's okay because what it's trying to do is it's trying to read from this spot, and of course, we don't have anything yet. I'm gonna get rid of this. That's an uppercase, we're gonna make it lowercase. Now, once we've got it ready to rock and roll, I'm gonna hit save to disk. And what this is going to do is, wow! Did that really finish that fast? No way, probably because I really pre-built this. Let's check to make sure that it is as expected. Okay. Oops, there's my file browser. Damn. 
We need some bigger monitors here, John. Okay, I'm going to D. Take our EDU. We got Houdini Secrets. This is HSL VAT. And we exported this as a sim. And there's Softy. Whoa, there they are. 70 versions of Softy Roberto coming across here, or the blanket that's covered around Roberto. So it's called Softy. All right, it worked. That was really fast. That just surprised me. Thank you very much for your patience. Now let's go back to our CHOP network. Double click into there. And now with this SOP, what we're going to do is dot dot slash dot dot <coughs> slash. And what do we call this? File cache? Yeah, file cache one. There we go. Okay, we're going to load in the file cache information. Now, Here's the important thing. What you got to do is you got to set this to animated because this is an animated character. So if you click on animated, and then we see that we're attribute scoped for the point positions and for TX, TY, TZ, that means we're loading in a whole bunch of channels of information. If we want to see what that actually all looks like, go ahead and click on the eye icon on the geometries chop. It says invalid SOP. Now, that's not fun. How did it not like it? File cache, cast attributes, delete attributes, read back. Rah. Cancel. All right, animated. What happens to make it static? Does it, no, does it read better now? Okay, so why isn't it that, why doesn't it like it? Geometry, channel. So, okay, this is not fun. Okay, so why does it give me an error? Okay, input, invalid input sub. I do not know why. So, Let's try to do this again. Let's say export relative path. So cloth, file, cache, import, accept. Okay, I'm gonna leave this for now. I don't. Th I, th I think this is just a baking error. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish creating this network, but we've got the geometry coming in. And let's go ahead and drop in a filter chop. So what this is going to do is smoothen out the data. So on the effect, I'm going to put a 0.5 here. And for the filter width, I'm going to put in a 0.125. And then there we go. And then so all I need now, and do we have any information here? Yeah, there it is. See, it actually did process. Now it says we've got about um, 1,600 samples here. And we've got lots and lots of information here, which is just what I was looking for. Okay, good. Now what we're going to do is put an export chop on here. Export. So what we're going to do is we've got the information and we've smoothened out the data, which is really cool. But now we've got to send it out and put it back into the SOP network. So I've got the SOP export. I'm going to put this on here. And now for the channels, I'm going to put, leave that is, but for the node, I'm going to put dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, mm -hmm. dot, dot, slash channels. I'm going to call it channel one. They're probably going, hey, dude, channel one doesn't exist. Why'd you put that there? That is okay, because what we are going to do is we are going to kind of, we're going to add that in just a wee bit. So where it says path, we want T question mark. Now, why are we putting T question mark? The reason why we put a question mark in is because a question mark, if you were attending my Tech Art Talk Live a couple weeks ago, you'll realize the question mark stands for anything. 
but just one character of anything. So in this case, all it could be is TX, TY, TZ. So X, Y, Z correspond to the anything. So I'm going to put the display flag, I'm going to put the template flag, I'm going to put the export flag all on that because that what we want is the start of the show. This is where all the excitement is going to happen. All right, I'm going to go up a level. And um, after the file cache, then I want to put the channel stop. So this is where the information from chops is going to get funneled back into. And now for the method, I'm going to make it animated just the way it was before. And for the channel scope, we want TX, Y, and Z. And for the attribute scope, we want P. But for the chops, what we want here is dot dot slash smooth cloth. And then we want export. Okay, now we have an error here, of which I do not know why, but I'm going to go into here and make sure the geometry is it static. Oh, this has to be animated. And that's the reason why it's going. So, okay. Okay, it, did really, it really didn't like it when I made that animated, did it? Okay, I'm going to turn that back to static. And that means I have to turn this one back to static. Okay, I don't think this is going to have quite the effect that I was looking for, but I think you kind of get the gist. All right, let's go ahead and play this. And I think I'm doing something wrong here, but I'm going to continue going on here before I go and spend a lot of time debugging what I did wrong with this chop. But let's go ahead and finish this bad boy. Let's go ahead and put a UV unwrap SOP at the end of this channel. UV unwrap. Okay, this UV unwrap, what this does is it puts an extra texture map channel or a UV channel onto our object. And we're going to need that information because we're going to load up our texture information inside of our object so that we can put all of the vertex cache information onto it and let it get mapped out during our in-material animation. Really, really cool stuff. So we've got the UV unwrap there. Let's put in a normal. We have to put in a normal because right now I don't think there's a normal. Is there a normal? No, not yet. But let's go ahead and put in a normal. Okay, the reason for this is that we've got to get normals on every one of our points. If we don't have, okay, we got to change this from vertices to points. Okay, if we don't do that, then when we do the deformations inside of the material, then if we don't move the normals as well, then the position of the vertices is going to move in real time, but their normals are not, or its orientation is not, and it's going to look like, although it is moving, it's going to look like it's not moving. In other words, it's just going to look wrong, and we want it to look right. So I put the normals back into it. All right. Now let's go ahead and export this. I put an export uh, output. I don't want export. I want output. Got my exports, my outputs mixed up. Change that to output. All right, we are good to go. I'm going to go ahead and save this yet once again because I don't want to goof up. All right, we've got everything ready to rock and roll. We are ready to start the VAT magic. Now, what we've done up until this point is kind of get things set up. We've gotten things working so that we can create our simulation. We've got a real-time simulation on our hands that could be kind of dicey and may not make its way into real time if it had to animate like that in real time. 
But we're going to use Houdini Magic and make that happen. So I'm going to lay down a ROP network, an ROP, and then I'm going to call it soft vat underscore output. All right, we've got the soft vat output, or drop into there. And so I'm going to drop in a, oh, well, it's, 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 it's better to look for this. I'm just going to hit tab and then I'll look for VAT. There it is. Labs Vertex Animation Textures. Okay. And then I'm going to call this Soft Cloth VAT. All right. So let's go ahead and set things going. Uh, render with the take current. And with start and end, 1 to 70 is exactly what we want. Method soft, we want this. Now remember why I said that there's four ways of outputting VAT. There's the soft, which is for the cloth deformations. But you can also change this to rigid, and to fluid, and to sprites. And I think next week we're going to be doing rigid bodies, and the following week we're going to be doing fluids. <clears throat> Make sure that this is UE4, initialized for engine. And for the soft path, I'm going to go ahead and click up that, and I'm going to up one more level. And then we're going to go into cloth, and then we want the output node. Thank you. All right, let's move on down the line. For the target texture size, we want it 1024. Oh, that should be good enough for now. And for the project, I don't want this to, let's see, do we want, where do we want this to go to? The project is hip export. So let's see what we've got here. Job, export. Okay, let's call this cloth soft. So I'm going to cancel this and where it says export, and I'm going to say cloth VAT. And then for the component, I'm going to put cloth BAT. Okay. Oh, one important thing to put where it says pack normals into position alpha. What you got to do is you got to unclick that. And the reason why is because we don't want the normals sitting inside of the alpha of the color. We want the normals sitting inside of a separate texture map so we can bring them in separately. And that's really important. Notice that uh, when we did that, it exposed the normal channel here because that's exactly what we want. I'm going to go ahead and click the normal. So that means it's going to output normal information. And here I'm going to click the color and it's going to output the color information. Okay, so it, it's all on. So I'm going to hit click file save before we do anything. Then once we're ready, we're just going to hit the render and we're going to ready to rock and roll. Go ahead. It did it that fast? It never works that fast when I'm working on this. Did it work? Let's check. Okay, here I am in my project, and there's my uh, export, and then cloth fat. Aha, look at this. Check it out. It created materials, a meshes, and a textures folder. Let's take a look at the materials. Yes, there's the uh, data dead JSON, exactly what I wanted. Here's the meshes, there's my mesh object, and here are my textures. We should have three textures, one corresponding for the color of the object, one color surrounding for the normal, and one kind corresponding for the position. Perfect, three different texture maps. Excellent. So it all worked. We are ready to rock and roll. Okay, our work here, I would say, is almost finished with Houdini, but we're gonna need to come back, but we're gonna shift our focus over to UE4. Okay, well, we've got the UE4 action here. I've already got a project set up, and oh, let's go ahead and create a, a new level to put this in so we won't be interfering with anything else. So do I have anything soft? Okay, VAT, all right. Uh, I created a folder here called VAT, V-A-T. And inside I have soft, but this is my old preparation project. So what I'm going to go here is create a new folder, and I'm going to type in soft VAT. 
because that's the one we are working on in class today. I'm going to double click into that. And then I'm going to go to File, New Level, and then we're going to create a brand new level here. Okay, nice and simple. We're really not going to do much. I'm just going to click Save Current. And then since I'm in Save Level, okay, uh, let's change this to VAT, Soft VAT. Let's just go ahead and put it here. We'll put Soft VAT Level. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the FBX, and which is going to correspond to just the mesh object. Now we're not going to bring in Roberto because Roberto is really not that important in this situation. Really, the star of the show is the cloth. So I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to say import into game. And this is definitely not what I wanted. So, oh, uh, where's my uh, uh, project? I think it was on the D drive. And we want, oh yeah, TAA, oh here it is, Techart EDU, Houdini Secrets. And here is my HSL VAT project. And we're looking for our FBX object. So here we are with the cloth VAT. Now, I want where it says meshes, go into the meshes folder, so I want cloth vat underscore mesh dot FBX. Go ahead and click that, click open. And then here we have is all of our stuff. Okay, now, let me see if I can change this up a little bit. Okay, I can't. Okay, we're gonna leave this as default because we really don't wanna change anything, but and if, if we do want anything, what we want to do is where it says uh, remove degenerates, we're going to make sure that that's off because we want to remove the degenerates because we don't like degenerates here. Ha, 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 ha. Very funny. All right. Make sure that that's off. Click import all. Okay. Then we have our cloth mesh. Let's go take a look at this cloth mesh. I'm going to double click to go into it. All right. Nothing really too sexy about this cloth mesh. Nothing really too special about it. Now it doesn't even have a material. However, if we look and turn on its normal UV information, you notice that it's got three channels. Now here's the first channel, it's channel zero, and that corresponds to this center part. If we go on to call channel one, that encodes this edge top edge right there, which corresponds to, I'm not sure what, but I think that corresponds to the vertex numbers, you know, one vertex for uh, one UV coordinate for every vertex. And if we change this over to channel two, then we got more of the same. Okay, everything's looking good. We are good to go. Go ahead, file, save. We are doing fine. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to import the textures. I'm going to go right click in here, we go import to VAT. Now I'm going to go into my cloth VAT. You know, I'm going to go right into textures, and then I want to pull in all three of these textures. Click open. And now here comes some funky stuff. Those are some funky looking texture maps. So we got to process each one of these texture maps is because they're not colors anymore. You're already saying going, uh, Chris, you really flipped your gourd here. Of course these are colors. I'm looking at the colors right now. No, they're not really colors anymore. They're actually numbers, they're vectors. Because remember, XYZ is a vector that corresponds to RGB. And because they're between 0 and 1 doesn't mean that they're colors. That just means that. But that also means is that we don't want this to be treated in gamma color space. You're going, huh? What? Gamma color space? Okay, I'm, I, think I'm gonna, I think I had a lecture on uh, Tech Art Talk Live oh, a few months ago uh, about what linear light was. 
go ahead and check out that lecture on what linear lighting is all about. And I'll, it'll explain what you need to know in order to deal with objects or textures which aren't colors. And let's take a look at the cloth vat color texture. Okay, there it is. No, it's kind of funky looking. Why is that? Okay. It has 124, or 1024, that stands for the amount of vertices that it has totally on here. So it, there's 124, or 1024 vertices, and for 138, and for 138 frames. Now, I have no idea how the math works on this. I just knowing that the math does work. But in order to get this process to be not a color, but to be a number, we have to change some certain things. Now, the first thing we got to do is change this so that the compression settings it says HDR, so it assumes that it's a high def image. It says HG, uh, RGB, no, no RGB. Okay, yeah, that's close, but what we're going to do is we turn this to uh, vector displacement map, so this RGBA8. Okay, now you saw, you saw that it shifted in color. That's because we now shifted it from gamma color space to linear color space, and that will typically have a darkening effect on your textures. Now we also want to maintain, we want to change the texture technique. Okay, not there. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, for the filter, change the default filter from default to nearest. Okay, go ahead and then click save. And guess what, gang? We've got to do that two more times. So let's do this to the normal map. Change this to a displacement map. Now, this is looking really funky. Don't worry about it. It's supposed to be that way. We want it to be, oh wait, not the displacement map. Yeah, we want it, RG. No, that's 16 bit. We want vector displacement map. Yeah, that's why it looks funky. Okay. Now, the reason why it looks like that is because we have an RGB and alpha value for the vector for every one of these frames here. So, for every vertex we have here, we've got one pixel that corresponds to what its normal should be. And actually, it's not the actual normal values, this is the normal offset. Because the very first frame establishes where we want our original normal to be. And every frame thereafter on this texture map corresponds to the delta in the change of the normal. Not the actual normal itself, but the delta to the change. So we've got that. So let's go ahead and change the filter then to the nearest and click the save. Now if we did that to the normal, then I guess we have to do that to the position as well. Okay, there's our position, and then this corresponds to not to a normal vector, but this actually corresponds to the point position. But it's not the actual point position, it's the delta or the change in point position that we're manipulating. So I'm going to change this here, change this over to vector displacement, change my filter to nearest, and click save. All right, we've now efficiently reprocessed our material, our textures, and then we are good to go. All right, now we're ready to start building the material. And remember I said we have to clean a magical material in order to take all of these normals and these positions and then do some in material magic where we're going to go into the vertex shader and we're gonna play some monkey business with the existing cloth vertex positions, but we're going to let the material handle all this for us. So I'm going to right click on here and where it says materials and textures, what I want is a material function. And then I'm going to name that, I'm going to call it soft that, make it capital AT to be consistent. And I'm going to call it soft that underscore MF, short for material function. I'm going to drop in there. I'm going to move that up here. And I know this is crazy, but what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that output. Don't need them. Don't like them. Hit the lead. Yes, I know what we're doing. Get rid of that output. All right. 
Now what we're going to have to do is change some things around here. What do we have to do? Uh, expose the library. Yes. And for the library categories text, we're going to call this soft bat. Soft B-A-T. Okay, we've got that taken care of. Now we're, there's nothing in here. Yeah, where is it going to come from? What we're going to do is we're going to go back to Houdini, and Houdini is going to help us out. So I'm going to open up, bring Houdini back up in here. Now, here we are in the labs VAT output chop or SOT ROP. And I'm going to move up here where it says render user interface simple. I'm going to change that to normal. And that exposed a whole bunch of things down below. And here's what we want is sample shader code. I'm going to go ahead and where it says that, I'm going to make sure that it says soft vertex material function. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to click in the copy and just click that. So what that's going to do is put it in our memory. And now I'm going to return back to UE4. And then I'm just going to right click directly. No, actually, I'm just going to hit Control V to paste all that. And look at all that stuff. That is what just got transferred. Isn't that wild? That's a really cool thing to do. And I'm glad that it does it for me because I would hate to have to re reproduce this material function every single time I wanted to use VAT. All right, we are just about ready to rock and roll. Go ahead and save this material function. Come on, save for me. There you go. All right. What does one do with a material function? Well, they cre use it to create a material, of course. So let's go ahead and create a material for our material function. And material, that's what we want. And we're going to call this soft, V-A-T, underscore, capital M for mat, material. Okay. Double click on that. Okay. Now, here comes the crazy part. Now, we already have this material function created, so I'm going to right-click on here, and I'm, I know it's going to be soft vat material function. There we go. Soft vat material function, MF. There we go. All right. Now, we're going to hook all this up. Now, the hookup is pretty straightforward because kind of like it kind of like goes put A with A, put B with B, right? All right. We got color. Put it to base color. Normal, put that to normal. World position offset, put that on here. That's very important. Now, it's going to give an error, but that's okay. Oh, there's a couple other things that we need to do. We need to put some custom UV action here. So in here, on, let me click on this node here. What we have to look for are two things. First is the custom UV, so I'm going to go custom UV, the number of custom UVs, set that to five because we need all five of those. And the other thing we're going to learn, we're going to need to do is we are going to need to turn on the tangent space normals. Actually, we're going to turn them off. So look for tangent space normals. I'm going to click on that to turn them off. We don't want the tangent space normals. All right. Now, when we created those spare UV channels, we got a whole bunch now here. So what we're going to do is click the corresponding UV channels to its corresponding element. So UV1 goes to UV1. UV2, UV2. Get the pattern, folks. Not crazy difficult. All right. We've got that side hooked up. Now let's go and go to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Yes, I know it's not ready to go. But I just wanted it saved just to be consistent, just in case something bad happens. I'm going to move this down over here, and I'm going to navigate over to where my texture maps are. I'm going to click uh, the first color map, 
then the normal map, then the position map, and a drag and drop, and put those right into there. So now we've got three texture samples sitting on here. Now we don't want them to be texture samples. Why? Because the material function doesn't like them, doesn't work with that. So what we have to do is convert them to texture objects. So right click on each of those nodes and then over the menu, choose convert to texture object. Texture object and texture object. Okay, now which one is this? I'm gonna click on this one. This is my position. So I'm gonna put this one up here and I'm going to move that up here so it makes a little more sense. I know this one's the normal map. And I bet this one is the color map. How did I guess? There you go. Okay, now the only thing we have to do is add the speed. So I'm going to go and create a scalar parameter. And I'm going to label this VAT soft speed. VAT soft underscore speed. And I'm going to hook that right into there. OK. Click File Save. OK. Now, with all this going on, we think we should be ready to rock and roll. Not quite yet. So we've got a material function driving a material. Now, all we have to do is set an instance for the material. So if we wanted to, we could create other VATs, which are very, very similar. And all I have to do is just change the texture maps. OK, so what we do is where it says soft vat underscore M, right click, and go to create material instance. And we'll call it soft VAT underscore MI for material instance. Double click to go in. There we go. All right. Now we're in the material instance. So all we have to do now is turn things on and get them going. So what we could do in order to make sure that everything is working copacetically for the preview mesh I can come over here and let me see if it says soft, Roberto soft, uh, let's say VAT, cloth vat mesh. Is that what we created? I can't remember now. Click over here. We have cloth vat mesh. Okay. That's exactly what we want. So cloth vat mesh. Cloth that mesh. Okay. So we're going to be looking at this as our preview object rather than the other object that was given to us by default. All right. We're going to go ahead and turn on all these. We're going to turn on the VAT soft speed. We're going to turn on the number of frames. We're going to put, click on the position min. We're going to click on the position max. Now, where are we going to get these values? I'm glad you asked. We're going to get these from Houdini. So click over onto Houdini. And these numbers are sitting right for us right here. Look at that. The frame range where the speed is right here. So I'm going to click on this little copy to buffer. Click that. Make sure it's clicked. Go back to UE4. There's and whoops. I hit Control V, and there's my speed number. All right, the number of frames. I believe it was 69. Bill and Ted would be so proud. Now for the position min, we want negative 250. I'm just going to copy this because I'm feeling lazy and really tired. Hit Control V. There's my min. And my max, I bet, will be a positive 250. No, it's not. It's 237.1795. Okay. Egg on my face. Click Copy. 
and then move that back to UE4. Okay. Okay, so it's not an oh well, there it is. Okay. Okay, so it's doing weird things, but this is really good. It's doing exactly what I would hoped it would be. So click on save. And it's building. Okay, very good. Now let's go ahead and then drop. our vertex on here. Here's our cloth. Push it up. Now, what we're going to do is grab our material instance and put it in the material for our object. So here's a material instance. Go ahead and drop that in there. And look at that. Here is our... Oops. There is our simulation running in real time. So you say, oh, I don't believe it. Let's go ahead and play just to prove it. It just covered our guy. And there's Roberto getting covered with a cloth simulation. Looking kind of beautiful there. All right. Now, you're probably going, man, that's got to be pegging the GPU. But surprisingly, it's not. Let's go here to show and go check. Oh, I'm sorry. Go to lit where it says optimize view models. Go to where it says shader complexity. This is going to show you how hard the shader is working. Look at that, folks. It is green. It is green like a lime's bottom. It doesn't get any greener than that. In fact, this VAT is actually cheaper than the ground material, but there is no material on the ground material. That is wild. But actually, it is working hard. The vertex shader and the pixel shader are working hard, but they're still very, very green, and so there's not a whole lot going on here. I'm going to change my shader complexity back to lit, and we should be ready to rock and roll. I'm going to save my current, and there we go. That is what I wanted to go over, folks, and I know that this isn't terribly dramatic, but if you can imagine that this could be a character, this could be an entire object, this could be water, this could be cloth, this could be anything with a constant topology, and it would all look spectacular. And this is all running almost free real time in engine. Now that's where the real cool part of this is, and this is why it's so valuable. Um, one of our alumni, Caitlin Peplo, was a technical artist on the last Borderlands game, and she gave an excellent series explaining how she used VAT out the wazoo in creating a lot of the visual effects for Borderlands. If you have an opportunity, go check out Caitlin's demonstration on there. It's some really, really interesting stuff. This is just baby steps. Okay, folks, this is what I wanted to cover today. And let's see if I can transfer back to my broadcast and you actually see my ugly mug. Okay, OBS. Okay, so let's go back to here. Okay, great. So let me go ahead and wrap things up here. All right, we've got that going. Okay, no, that isn't what I want. Okay, now I forgot to put that on here. Well, that's what happens when we work with students until right until class time. We tend to miss slides on the presentation. Oh, well, that's the way things go. If you like what you saw today, go ahead and click the subscribe button on the little YouTube in the lower right-hand corner. I think it's on this side. Go ahead and click that, and it will remind you whenever we go live on YouTube. Or if you really want to, my name is Chris Rhoda. Check me out on Facebook. Check me out on the Chris Rhoda location, or check me out on LinkedIn as Chris Rhoda. Or, if you're interested, check us out as TechArtEDU, 
and that is both on Facebook and on LinkedIn. But if you really want to help me, what you could do is check out techartedu.com. That's techartedu.com. And you're going to see a website there. And on that website, there are several kind of um, sign-up buttons of where you'll get signed up for all of the updates that we do. That means that you're going to get signed up for uh, information on when Procedural Gems comes out. You're going to get signed up for when we have more uh, Houdini Secrets Live broadcasts or Check Our Talk Live broadcasts. And also lots of other goodies and more information about when Tech, Art, Tech Artist Handbook series comes out. We're working very hard on the particles section on the real-time visual effects for technical artists. Okay, great. Thank you very much for joining me. Join me next week, 3 o'clock, same bat time, same bat channel, where we'll be going over rigid body destruction using VAT. And maybe if we have time, then I'll show if, uh, if we can get around to it, then maybe uh, how to uh, move a character around and using VAT to import very sophisticated three-dimensional character geometry as well. So until next week, thank you very much for coming. I'll see you later. Arrivederci.